Let's look at some principles of web design. Usability and the utility, not necessarily the visual design, determine the success or the failure of a website. Since a visitor of the page is the only person who clicks the mouse, they're basically the person that decides everything. This is design is considered a user-centric design, and it has become a standard approach for successful and profit-oriented web design. After all, if users can't use a feature, well then it might as well not exist. Let's look at this user-centered illustration so that we can better see how user-centric design functions. The process is basically initiated by analyzing and observing a person. You'll go ahead and you'll develop the wireframe and prototypes and evaluate your idea and then you'll move into the design phase. Once you've actually created the design, you're going to want to analyze and observe and this process might circle around several times until you have a refined product. Finally though, once you've evaluated for the last time, if everything looks like it's good, then you'll go ahead and you'll implement. Let's go ahead and take a look at how users actually think. Basically, users' habits on the web aren't really that different from customers' habits in a store. Visitors glance at each page, they scan text, and they click on the first link that catches their interest or vaguely resembles the thing that they're looking for. In fact, a large part of the page they don't even look at. Most users search for something interesting or useful or clickable, and as soon as some promising candidates for that are found, then the users click. If the new page doesn't meet the user's expectations, the back button is clicked and the search process is continued. Basically, habits on the web are very similar to what happens in the store. As you can see from this illustration right here, this is basically illustrating where a user is going to look first. The red areas are the areas that attract their attention first, so of course faces are always grab your attention, and then from there it's going to kind of radiate out and they're going to observe the other contents on the page. They've done a lot of tests about how users actually look at websites and it's kind of interesting to look into that a little bit. When you think about a user, they appreciate quality and credibility. If a page provides a user with high quality content, then they're willing to compromise the content with advertisements and the design of the site, perhaps. This is the reason why not so well designed websites with great content get a lot of traffic over time. Content is always more important than the design which it supports, but they do go hand in hand. When someone's on the web, they don't actually read, they scan. Analyzing a web page, users search for some specific point or anchor which is going to guide them through the content of the page. Web users are certainly impatient and they insist on instant gratification. It's a really simple principle, really. If a website isn't going to be able to meet the user's expectations, then the designer has failed to get his job properly done and the company's going to lose money. The higher the cognitive load, the less intuitive the navigation. The more willing users are to leave the website and search for alternatives. It's really easy to go find something, a replacement on the web, so people are quick to leave if it's not working for them. Users don't make optimal choices. They don't search for the quickest way to find the information they're looking for. Neither do they scan web pages in a linear fashion, going sequentially from one site section to another one. Instead, users satisfy. They choose the first reasonable option. As soon as they're able to find a link that seems like it might lead to the goal, there's a very good chance that it'll be immediately clicked. Optimizing is very difficult and it takes a long time. Satisficing is more efficient. Users follow their intuition. In most cases, users muddle through instead of reading the information a designer has provided. According to Steve Krug, who wrote an excellent book on usability, the basic reason for that is that users don't really care. If they find something that works, we stick to it. It doesn't matter to us if we understand how things work as long as we can use them. If your audience is going to act like that, like you're designing, let's say, a billboard, then design great billboards for them. And finally, users, they want to have control. 
Users want to be able to control the browser and rely on a, con a consistent data presentation throughout the site. They don't want new windows popping up unexpectedly. They want to be able to get back using the back button. Make a site that's going to work for the expectations of the user. Let's go ahead and let's look at a graph, another graph. This is the F-shape page scan. And using tracking studies, they found that people tend to scan pages in an F-shaped pattern. First people read in a horizontal movement, usually in the upper area um, of the content. It usually forms the top part of the F. Then they move down the page a bit and they read across the second horizontal movement and this typically covers kind of a shorter area than the first initial movement and so this forms the second line, the bar on the F. And then finally people scan the contents left side in a vertical movement. Sometimes this is fairly slow and systematic and other times people move very quickly. But consistently people do scan pages in this F pattern. So what does this mean for you? Well, first of all you need to know that people will not read your text thoroughly. They won't read it word by word. They will rarely read everything on a web page, especially when they're doing their initial research into which product or service to buy. This means that the first two paragraphs on your website, this means that the first two paragraphs on your web page must state the most important information. And then there's some hope that the visitors will actually read the material. They'll probably read more of the first paragraph than the second paragraph. Use a compelling headline on your page, spell out the main benefits of your product and service high up on the page, and you should also use subheadings and bullet points so people will notice them as they scan the left side of the content in the final stem of the F. You always want to make sure that you chunk your information in little bite-sized pieces too. People are not able to read large portions of text on the web. You don't want to make users think. According to Steve Krug, the first law of usability is that a web page should be obvious and self-explanatory. When you're creating a site, your job is to get rid of any question marks that might exist. The decisions that a user needs to make consciously, considering pros, cons, or alternatives, make sure it's really easy for them to get that information. If the navigation and the site architecture aren't intuitive, the number of question marks grows and that makes it much harder for users to comprehend how a system works and how to get from point A to point B. A clear, well-defined structure with visuals that are very supportive and easily recognizable and also links that are easy to find and use are going to help users to reach their end goal and find the path through the site. Let's go ahead and let's look at an example. Um, this is a screen grab of the Yale School of Art. Yes, I did say Yale. And I mean, what can we say about this website? What does it mean? If users need to explore websites according to the F pattern, the s statements up here in the yellow, I guess, would be the first thing that you're going to look at. Uh, but I'm just at such a loss. There's like no real hierarchy. It's totally confusing with all this content. This is a horrible example. Um, let's look at something a little bit easier. This basically is the University of Washington's School of Art and you can see that they've reduced the cognitive load to make it much easier for the visitors to grasp the idea behind the system. Once you've achieved the system then you can communicate with the system and it's useful and you can see how users would certainly benefit from it. People aren't going to use the website if they can't find their way around it and if there's too much garbage in there they certainly won't be able to see any of the information and get what they need from it. Don't squander users' patience. In every project, when you're going to offer your visitors some sort of service or tool, try to keep the user requirements minimal. You want to give them the least amount of action that's required. The more likely a random visitor is to actually try it out if it's easy. First-time visitors are willing to play with the service. Not They don't want to fill out long web forms for an account that they might never use in the future, but they do want to experiment. So let users explore the site and discover your services without forcing them to share private data. It's reasonable to force users to enter an email address to test a feature, but you don't want to really ask for much more. Not initially, anyways. 
users are probably going to be eager to provide an email address if they were asked for it after they've seen how a feature works. So you want to give them some idea of what they're going to get in return. You want to remove all barriers. Don't require subscriptions or registrations first. A user registration alone is enough of an impediment to the user navigation to cut down on incoming traffic. You want to manage to focus users' attention. A website provides both static and dynamic content. Some aspects of the site interface attract attention more than others do. So obviously images are going to be more eye-catching than text, just as sentences marked as bold are more attractive than plain text as long as there's not too much of it. The human eye is a highly non-linear device, so when web users are surfing the web, they can instantly recognize edges, patterns, motions. This is why video-based advertisements are extremely annoying and distracting, but from the marketing perspective, they really capture the user's attention. Focusing users' attention to specific areas of a site with a moderate use of visual elements can really help your visitors to get from point A to point B without really having to think about how it's actually supposed to be done. Remember that the least amount of question marks visitors have, the least amount of questions that visitors have, the better sense of orientation they have, and the, the more trust that they will develop towards the company that the site represents. So less thinking is good in the front. The thinking needs to occur behind the scenes. You need to come up with all the thinking so the user doesn't have to think. The better the user experience, which is the aim of the usability in the first place, the more likely that they will stay and return to the website. This screen grab of Jack Seller's website really illustrates the principle of focus. The key element is directly visible to the users, and it's the wine bottles, of course. They show up well on this nice clean page. The cream colored box contrasts well with the background and it's attractive and appealing, but it's still very calm and purely informative. There's subtle hints that provide the user with enough information on how to find out more about the product, but definitely the image is first and foremost. And this site is just really elegant and, and very beautiful to look at. You want to strive for feature exposure. Modern web designs are usually criticized due to the approach of guiding users with a one, two, three done steps with large buttons and visual effects. But really, from a design perspective, those elements aren't necessarily a bad thing. On the contrary, when you offer guidelines like this, they're really extremely effective because they'll lead the visitor through the site content in a very simple and user-friendly way. Diapers.com combines visual appeal with a clear site structure. So even though there's a ton going on in this site, the navigation options are, are clearly visible at first glance and they're very well thought out and extremely easy to use. If you know what you want, you can literally get there in two clicks. It's really fast and extremely user friendly. If you're not sure what you want, there's easy ways that you can use the drop-down menu and the sub-tier navigation systems to find the appropriate category. If you let your user see clearly what functions are available, it, the fundamental principle of, uh, of successful user interface design will come to fruition. It doesn't really matter how this is achieved ultimately, what matters is the content is well understood and the visitors feel comfortable in the way that they interact with the system. You definitely want to make use of effective web writing. The web is much different from print. It is necessary to adjust the writing style to the user's preferences and browsing habits. So promotional writing, it's not going to be read, they're just going to skip over it. Long text blocks without images and keywords and lists, they are not, they're just going to be skipped right over. Exaggerated language, it's totally ignored. You want to talk business. You want to avoid cute or clever names, marketing-induced names, company-specific names, and unfamiliar technical jargon. If you're going to describe a service that you want the users to maybe create an account, the verbiage sign up is better than start now, which is better than explore our services. You just want to be straightforward as far as what you want. As you can see from the screen grab, Apple gets directly to the point. There's no cute words, no exaggerated statements. They just basically, in less than 10 words, are going to 
let visitors know exactly what they're looking for. The big visual is an awesome presence on this site and it just grabs your attention and keeps it right there. You definitely want to strive for simplicity. You want to keep it simple or use the KISS principle. That should be the primary goal of any website. Users are, are rarely on a site just to enjoy the design. You want that to be a supportive means. It should be transparent. It shouldn't be obvious. It should just be there supporting the website. Most of the time they're, they're looking for information despite the design. So you want to strive for simplicity instead of complexity. From the visitor's point of view, the best site design is just text that is easy to read, not too much text, and a really great accompanying visuals. You want to not include any advertisements or further content blocks that are going to get in the way of what they're actually doing. So this is one reason why a user-friendly web page is going to go ahead and create a good user experience while they're there. The uh, Jamba Juice site is it's clear in its intention. They're promoting the veggie fruit smoothies and you can see that big graphics grab your attention. We have nice space around everything and then the headline is going to tell you what it's all about and of course there's other ways you can drill into the site but this is just a great really simple example. That brings me to don't be afraid of white space. It's really, really hard to overestimate the importance of white space. White space is going to help reduce the cognitive load for the visitors, but and, and in addition, it's also going to make it possible to perceive the information presented on the screen. When someone new approaches a design layout, a website, the first thing that he or she is going to do is they're going to scan the page and divide the content area into digestible pieces of information. So when you have a really complex structure, it's going to be much harder to read and scan and analyze and work with. If you have a choice between separating two design segments by a linear line or some white space, it's generally better to use the white space solution. When you're, when you're creating a hierarchical structure, this will also help to reduce complexity. The better you manage to provide users with a sense of visual hierarchy, the easier your content is going to be perceived. So white space is really good. Here on the screen grab we're looking at, Veer uses white space as a primary design element. The result is a really well scannable layout which gives the content a dominating position that it deserves. And white space in this case isn't always white. It doesn't have to be white. It can just be a place for the eye to rest. You want to communicate effectively with a visible language. There was a gentleman called Aaron Marcus and he basically stated that three fundamental principles involved in the use of visible language which is basically the content that users see on a screen. They are to organize, you want to provide the user with a clear and consistent conceptual structure, consistency in screen layout and relationship and the way you navigate through the site. They're really important concepts of organization and the same conventions and rules should be applied to all of the elements that you're going to have on your site. You also want to economize. You want to do the most with the least amount of cues and visual elements. There are four major points that we want to think about. Simplicity, clarity, distinctiveness, and emphasis. Simplicity includes only the elements that are most important for communication. Clarity is all the components that should be designed so that their meaning is not ambiguous in any way. Distinctiveness is the important properties of the necessary elements and they should be distinguishable between each other. And finally, emphasis is the most important elements should be easily perceived. And then you want to communicate. You want to match the presentation to the capabilities of the user. The user interface must be kept in balance legibility, readability, typography, symbolism, multiple views, the color, the texture, all of these things have to be in balance in order to communicate successfully. So as a general rule you want to use a maximum of three typefaces and a maximum of three point sizes. A maximum of 18 words or essentially 50 to 80 characters per line of text. That is a formula that's going to work best. Conventions. There are friends. Conventional design of site elements doesn't result in boring websites. 
In fact, conventions are very useful as they reduce the learning curve. They, uh, the need to figure out how things work, for instance, it would be a usability nightmare if all websites had different visual presentations of RSS feeds. So that's not that different from our regular life when we tend to get used to basic principles on how we organize data, like in folders, or we do shopping, the placement of the products, uh, the way we write our list, all those things are conventions. So with a convention you can gain users confidence, trust, reliability, and you can prove your credibility. You can follow users' expectations and understand what they're expecting from a site navigation, text structure, search placement, etc. A typical example from a usability session is to translate the page into a foreign language, and you're basically assuming that your users don't know the foreign language, and provide your usability testers with a task to find something on the page in a different language that they can't understand. If the conventions of your website are well applied, the users should be able to achieve a not too specific objective even if they can't understand a word of what's going on in your website. So it's better to be innovative only when you know you really have a better idea, but certainly take advantage of conventions when you don't. Here on the FedEx website, these icons are ways that you can quickly link to various tasks on the web page. And they're icons that are fairly universal. So once you understand, you know, the meaning behind them, it, it makes sense. They're using that same metaphor and repurposing it a little bit, but it's definitely something that people are comfortable in using. And finally, you want to test early and you want to test often. You should pretty much always be testing as you build the website. And this should be applied to every web design project. Usability tests, they're going to provide crucial insights into significant problems and issues that are related with a particular design. If you test early and not too late, then you're going to have really valuable information as far as the development side of, of creating the website. So you should be able to kind of universally answer whether a particular layout is better than another one. If you analyze it and test early, you want to consider requirements, stakeholders, end users, budget, all of those things. There's some important things to keep in mind that testing one user is 100% better than testing none, and testing one user early in the project is better than testing 50 people at the end. Amazing, huh? Most errors are found in the initial part of the design, and they're much easier to clean up. It's much more expensive to try to remove them later because they're going to be integrated with the rest of your design. So testing, it's, it's a process that goes on and on. You want to test, you want to fix it, you want to test again. There might be problems which aren't found during the first round, especially if your website is complex, and perhaps those problems could snowball into other issues. So you just want to make sure that you test all avenue. Usability tests always produce useful results, hands down. You're either going to be pointed to the problems that you have, or you'll be pointed to the absence of a major design flaw, but that's important insight for you to have. After you've worked on a website for a few weeks, you can't observe it from a fresh perspective anymore. You're just too enmeshed in the project. You know how it's built, you know exactly how it works, it's going to always seem easy and intuitive to you, but you need to have independent testers that have no knowledge of the website and you need to observe how they go through and and you want to make sure you're testing in multiple browsers and multiple platforms that's part of the usability testing as well so if you want a great site you gotta test it you gotta test the users you gotta test the browsers you gotta test the platforms